Hello everyone, this is an updated summary of the basic structures in trichoscopy. Let's go. With trichoscopy or with your dermoscope, we evaluate the four basic types of structures, the hair shaft, the follicular openings which are called the dots, the skin surface, and the blood vessels which are visible on the scalp. I will start with the hair shafts. A normal hair shaft, a single normal hair shaft, is always uniform in structure and in color. You may have on the scalp of a certain person hair shafts which are of different colors. So, for example, one hair is darker and the other one is hypopigmented, or one is thicker and the other is thinner. It's possible, but a single hair shaft is always uniform in structure and in color. I will start with some basic hair shaft structure abnormalities, and the one which is most known are the exclamation mark hairs. We may see some exclamation mark hairs with a naked eye, usually they need to be 3 or 4 millimeter long to be visible by the naked eye. However, with trichoscopy, we can evaluate exclamation mark hairs which are significantly smaller in size. Exclamation marks in alopecia areata develop because there is an inflammatory process going on around the hair follicle which impacts the growth of the hair. So the hair in the active phase of disease, as it grows, it will be thinner and thinner and thinner. So the distal end will mark the normal thickness of the hair, while in the active phase of the disease, the hair shaft will be significantly thinner. So the exclamation mark hairs are a marker of active disease in alopecia areata, and they will be most commonly visible on the hair bearing margin of a patch. What can happen to an exclamation mark hair? Well, what is most probable, it keeps becoming thinner and thinner and thinner until it's so thin that it breaks off. When it breaks off, there will be a hair residue in the hair follicle opening, which will be visible from the perspective of a dermoscope as a black dot. And this is how it looks in trichoscopy. The other option is that the hair shaft keeps growing, but it is never so thin that it breaks off. It keeps growing and growing and growing, and there will be a long or an elongated exclamation mark hair, and these hairs are called the tapered hairs. And we call them the tapered hairs when the distal end of the hair is outside of the field of view of a dermoscope. And then a third option. You are seeing the patient, you start therapy, and then the hair, which was becoming thinner and thinner and thinner, suddenly it becomes thicker again. So within the hair shaft, when you perform trichoscopy, you will see a constriction. And these are called the pole pincus constrictions. They may be one constriction along the hair, all multiple of them. And this is how it looks in trichoscopy. If we see the exclamation mark hairs, especially if there are many of them, we can be almost sure that this is alopecia areata. However, in some cases, there may be exclamation mark hairs also in other diseases, and one of them is trichotillomania, where we find some exclamation mark hairs in 14% of patients, and also there may be exclamation mark hairs in some other diseases, for example, such as in chemotherapy-induced alopecia. When looking at the structure of the hair and the thickness of the hair, Hair. What is a specific feature of androgenic alopecia, we all know that this is the hair miniaturization. So the hairs become thinner and thinner and thinner, but this is not a synchronized way of thinning. So some hairs will be thin already and the others will be still thick. So this will give the picture of the so-called hair shaft thickness heterogeneity. Unlike telogen effluvium, in telogen effluvium we may also see some thinning of the hair, especially if it's, for example, telogen effluvium from anemia, which is very long-lasting. The hairs will become thinner and thinner and thinner, but it is synchronized and all hairs in the field of view will be thin. So by this method we can recognize uh, or make the differential diagnosis between androgenic alopecia and telogen effluvium. And here's a trichoscopy image. When you take a look at the red circle, you will see one follicle unit with one thick hair and one thin hair. The thin hair is the hair which is undergoing miniaturization. It will continue becoming thinner and thinner and thinner and shorter until it will develop into a small and very short and hypopigmented vellus hair. But also when you look at the broader picture, you will see many hairs which are still normal thickness. Some 
some which are thinner and some which are very thin and this is the hair shaft thickness heterogeneity typical for androgenic alopecia there are also several other hair shaft abnormalities or hair shaft structure abnormalities which may serve as markers for certain diseases i mentioned already the exclamation mark hairs and the tapered hairs but for example in tinea capitis you will see the coma hairs and the corkscrew hairs and in trichotillomania the typical or most specific features are the coal hairs and the flame hairs let me show you a few examples of how this looks in trichoscopy this is an example of a field of view full of coma hairs a single coma hair is not sufficient to suspect tinea capitis however if we have a full field of view of coma hairs multiple coma hairs in one field of view this is sufficient to make the initial diagnosis of tinea capitis and to start treatment however we will always perform micro psychological culture to first confirm the diagnosis but most importantly to identify the pathogen sometimes we may see the so-called corkscrew hairs in tna capitis however in most cases the corkscrew hairs are present in patients with dark skin phototypes this image is from my friend anna maria pinero from brazil she's seeing more patients with dark skin phototypes a trichoscopy feature which is associated with a certain or a specific disease are the coiled hairs in trichotillomania the coiled hairs develop when the patient pulls the hair when the hair is firmly attached to the scalp then when it breaks or it fractures then the distal end will coil sometimes multiple times and usually it will be very irregular at the distal end if there is only one coiled hair in a patient or one coiled hair in a field of view it does not make the diagnosis however if we see multiple features which are associated with trichotillomania or multiple coiled hairs this may be indicative of trichotillomania also specific for trichotillomania are the flame hairs we have described them several years ago these are hair residues which have a wavy structure because it resembles a flame we have called them the flame hairs here is a trichoscopy image of one of my patients with trichotillomania with some flame hairs but also with multiple broken hairs in the field of view if we see multiple broken hairs and the presence of some features specific for trichotillomania such as the flame hairs or the coiled hairs we can be sure or almost sure of the diagnosis of trichotillomania so just to repeat again some typical features of diseases the exclamation mark hairs and the table hairs in alopecia areata the coma hairs and the corkscrew hairs in tinea capitis and the coiled hairs and the flame hairs in trichotillomania the dots in trichoscopy are structures which mark the hair follicle opening this is because when we look from the perspective of a dermoscope at the hair follicle opening it may appear like a dot it will differ in color depending on how the dot or the follicle opening is filled and with what kind of material one of the most typical findings of trichoscopy are the yellow dots the yellow dots mark empty hair follicles this is a situation when the patient lost the hair there's nothing going on and the hair follicle will never stay empty for a long period of time if it is empty it will be filled with sebum and with keratotic material depending on whether there's more keratotic material or more sebum the yellow dot may look a little bit differently but the yellow dot will be always associated with the presence of sebum because sebum is yellow when we see a full field of view of yellow dots we can be almost sure that this is alopecia areata and usually in most cases this is long lasting alopecia areata because there is no more hair residue anymore and as mentioned in the beginning of my presentation if there is hair residue in the hair follicle it will appear black so yellow is a marker of empty hair follicles so just to repeat the yellow dots mark empty hair follicles which are filled with sebum or with keratotic material the black dots the black dots are typical for 
any disease in which the hair will break off at the level of the scalp and this is most commonly the case in anagen effluvium and one of the types of anagen effluvium is alopecia reata and here on the right side you see a field of view full of black dots however black dots which are seen under trichoscopy are not specific for alopecia reata they may be also present in other diseases and here are a few examples chemotherapy induced alopecia as we know chemotherapy induced alopecia similar to alopecia reata is a type of anagen effluvium and also here we may see multiple black dots in tinea capitis the hair shaft will be destroyed by the fungus and this will make the black dots appear in trichoscopy in trichotillomania the black dots are not so common but if the patient pulls the hair and the hair breaks at the level of the skull then some black dots may appear and finally this is a picture of lichen plana pilaris in lichen plana pilaris the black dots are rare but they may be present and i am showing this picture to visualize that if we see black dots that this does not exclude the diagnosis of lichen plana pilaris so the hair shaft abnormalities and the follicular openings the dots are the two most important structures in trichoscopy there may be also some abnormalities in the skin surface and in the blood vessels mainly in inflammatory scalp diseases and i will focus on these abnormalities in one of my upcoming videos i would like to thank you very much for listening and if you like trichoscopy and you would like to hear more about trichoscopy feel invited to take a look at my youtube channel where i try to publish some videos about trichoscopy and about hair diseases thank you very much